ecological theory of hurricanes and tornadoes, where forests come to protect people. Presented by Anastasia Makarieva and Viktor Garshkov, Petersburg Nuclear Physics Institute, Russia. An attentive observer will acknowledge that all the major atmospheric events, including hurricanes and tornadoes, are always accompanied by cloud formation and precipitation, that is, by condensation of water vapor. During condensation, water vapor is removed from the gas phase, so the total air pressure is locally reduced. As soon as there appears a region of low pressure, the neighboring air accelerates towards the region of condensation, ultimately producing violent winds. Atmospheric air consists of gas molecules. These molecules exert pressure on any surface as they heat it while chaotically moving. In the gravitational field of Earth, air pressure is balanced by the air column weight above the considered point. Therefore, when condensation occurs in the atmosphere and the vapor molecules disappear from the gas phase turning to liquid, there appears a weight shortage. In the result, air in the column expands and the air pressure at the surface drops. Now, why does water vapor condense at all? It does so due to the presence of a sufficiently large negative vertical gradient of air temperature. As a moist air parcel rises, it cools, so water vapor condenses and precipitates. To build a quantitative theory on that, we will need four major statements. Three of them are well known, while the fourth one the one about condensation is new. The first statement is the energy conservation law. The kinetic energy of winds doesn't appear from nothing. Winds form because of an air pressure gradient, which means that somewhere where pressure is high, air molecules hit each other more severely than somewhere else where pressure is low. In the result, air accelerates. The region of low pressure is located in the center of hurricanes and tornadoes. The equation at the bottom of this page reflects these considerations. The second law that must be respected is the law of matter conservation. It consists in the simple fact that as much air enters the circulation event in the horizontal direction, and exactly the same amount should be leaving it in the vertical direction. This condition relates the vertical and radial velocities as the equation at the bottom of this page prescribes. For example, as far as the hurricane is much broader than high, there are streams inside very rapidly in the horizontal direction through the narrow vertical cross section of the hurricane, and then rises much more slowly via the broad horizontal area of the hurricane. The third fundamental law, the law of angular momentum conservation, reflects the properties of rotation. It is exemplified by the well-known ice skater effect. When the ice skater's body has a large radius, as in the case of the slowly spinning lady in the upper part of the page, the rotation is relatively slow. When the ice skater changes her body position and becomes compact, small radius, the velocity of rotation increases sharply. For the same reason, air rotates more rapidly when approaching the wind wall of hurricane or tornado than it does at the outskirts of the circulation pattern. Using the three fundamental conservation laws, we have now related all the velocities, vertical, radial and tangential, to each other and to the pressure gradient. But the physical nature of the pressure drop itself has not so far been clarified. 
What causes air pressure to drop within the hurricane or tornado? Namely, this question is answered by the new theory. As soon as a moist air parcel rises at vertical velocity w, some part of its water vapor condenses. Weight of the air column diminishes, the air pressure at the surface drops. The closer to the center, the higher the pressure drop, as the resulting equation at the bottom prescribes. Note that this equation is valid for the area outside the eye only. In other words, pressure gradient is sustained by condensation of water vapor, which, in its turn, is made possible due to the air flow sustained by the pressure gradient. Thus, the condensation-induced circulation operates on the basis of a positive feedback. Combining the four equations we obtained and making some reasonable approximations, we obtain a unified framework for the description of compact circulation events like hurricanes and tornadoes. The developed approach yields quantitative estimates of the wind wall and eye radius, vertical, tangential and radial velocities as dependent on the distance to the center. These estimates are in good agreement with observations. In particular, the theory predicts that maximum pressure drop in hurricanes to be about two and a half times delta P, or around 100 millibars at 30 degrees Celsius. This is in excellent agreement with observations. We will now briefly summarize the new physics. Hurricanes and tornadoes develop at the expense of potential energy, not latent heat, that is released upon water vapor condensation. These are not heat engines, but dynamic systems that can be compared to compressed metallic springs. Hurricanes and tornadoes feed on atmospheric water vapor in very much the same manner as animals feed on plants. When water vapor is locally depleted, they have to move to a new area where it is abundant. When all the available water vapor is depleted, hurricanes and tornadoes dissipate and cease to exist, like animals die without food. They may not form again until a sufficient amount of water evaporates slowly into the atmosphere. This is very important if evaporation is a very slow process, while condensation, that is, water vapor consumption, can occur at an arbitrarily high rate. Tornado differs from hurricane in that it is an even more compact event with a horizontal size of a few kilometers only. It can develop both over sea and on land, where water vapor, due to some peculiar geographic conditions, concentrates in a small local area. Now we understand the physical causes of why the dangerous winds form. We will now see how forests prevent their formation. To do so, we have to look at the effects of turbulent surface friction. Potential energy, delta P, is released as the air parcel rises to height H. Some part of it is converted to the kinetic energy of air movement. The rest is lost to friction. Total losses to surface friction are proportional to length L of the horizontal air path. If, while rising to height H of a few kilometers, the air moves by several dozens or even hundreds kilometers, as in hurricanes and tornadoes, in the horizontal direction, the turbulent friction losses appear to be much smaller than the available potential energy delta P. Hence, maximum possible winds develop. If, on the other hand, the circulation event develops over a thousand or more kilometers, then friction losses become substantial. Winds are generated by condensation, but there is not enough energy remaining for the hurricane velocities to develop. We conclude that in order to prevent hurricane or tornado formation, 
one should prevent condensation from occurring in relatively small, isolated areas. This is, however, impossible if the surface is homogeneous with respect to condensation. For example, on a large oceanic surface far from the coast, there is no preferential place where condensation could occur, no particular length scale. In the result, condensation and circulation events come randomly in all sizes, as large cyclones as well as compact hurricanes and tornadoes. The hurricane arises as a spatial and temporal fluctuation of the condensation process in the absence of a preferential spatial scale. Natural forests create a non-random spatial scale for condensation, preventing dangerous fluctuations of this process. Where an extensive forest cover comes to border with the ocean, surface winds receive a preferential direction from the ocean to the continent. Condensation no longer erratically occurs over a variety of scales. It is consistently more intense over the natural forest canopy than over the ocean. Hence, winds blow from the ocean to the forest-covered continent along several thousand kilometers. For such a large circulation pattern, the surface friction is substantial, so violent winds do not have a possibility of forming. Circulation fluctuations are smoothed. Hurricanes and tornadoes do not develop either on land or in the ocean. For example, the southern Atlantic Ocean is freed from hurricanes by the large-scale ocean-to-land winds driven by the Amazon and Congo rainforests. The key feature of natural forests, their high leaf array index, makes evaporation and hence condensation over the canopy more intense than it is over the ocean. The evaporated moisture undergoes condensation and disappears from the gas phase. In the result, the air in the atmospheric column above the forest rarefies. There appears an ascending air motion over the first canopy, which, in its turn, sucks in moist air from the ocean, as the light blue air shows. The air then returns to the ocean in the upper atmosphere, as the dotted arrow shows, after precipitation of moisture over the continent. This large-scale, forest-induced circulation pattern has been called the biotic pump of atmospheric moisture. Forests are therefore responsible for the ocean-to-land horizontal transport of moisture, which compensates the gravitational loss of liquid water by land to the ocean via the river runoff. Therefore, in contrast with the prediction of the modern global circulation models that do not take the considered effects of condensation into account, the new theory predicts that deforestation will have a major effect on both the hydrological cycle on land and on the frequency of occurrence of hurricanes in the adjacent ocean. We also note that the proposed approach gives a unified physical description to all the major circulation events, both compact and large scale. In the meantime, the modern meteorological paradigm invokes a divergent range of mechanisms, and even in this case does not provide a satisfactory quantitative explanation for many observed patterns. Turning to conclusions, a new unified theory for hurricanes and tornadoes as phenomena arising due to the air pressure drop that results from water vapor condensation is presented. An extensive forest cover precludes formation of such weather extremes both on the continent and on the adjacent oceanic area. 
by smoothing the temporal and spatial fluctuations of condensation processes. Here comes a list of publications where the relevant results were published. Many results were obtained in collaboration with Professor Larry Lee from the University of California, Riverside. We express our sincere gratitude to the symposium organizers, His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, and the Religion, Science and the Environment Committee for giving us this important opportunity of presenting our work. Dear audience, thank you very much for your kind attention.